Hey, in today's video, we're going to take a look at a 12 volt, 2000 watt inverter from Bouge RV. This is a, a new product from Bouge RV and it comes with a user guide and that's about it. Uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about some of the basic specs and then we're going to see how to install the thing, kind of run it through the paces and see how it does. So without further ado, there are uh, positive and negative connectors here on this side, a couple of vent fans and a ground connector. Now, I do think it's interesting they have the uh, cables terminating on the same side of the positive negative leads here. Usually they're on opposite sides, but what they did to sort of make that safer is they've, they've got these little uh, protective caps that screw on on top of your cables from the from the batteries so that um, yeah, so that it's actually a little bit safer. There's no actually exposed terminals there. So that's pretty nice. Now, in terms of the, uh, you know, the work side here, there's a couple of AC outlets here. And as I understand it, this is actually adjustable in the app. So there is Bluetooth app control on this. So we're going to take a look at how that works as well. And uh, you can actually determine in the app or configure whether you want 110 or 115 or 120 from this AC output. Now there's um, a little line output connector here. So if you want to wire in a uh, wire this to a panel circuit, for example, or wire this to a, a normal, you know, kind of an outlet box, you can do that as well. There's a fuse reset there and a couple of USB ports. There's an RS-485 port there. I assume you can hook that up to a remote control. Probably a few other things too. Uh, and then there's a little TTL connector here that you can use to connect this to a uh, self-starting or auto-starting generator type connection. So if the voltage on your batteries gets to a particular low set point, it can trip this to automatically go ahead and ask the generator to start supplying power to your battery system. All right, so let's go see how this thing installs and then we'll run it through some paces along with the app, take a look at the app and find out what you can do with that. All right, so here's our inverter. And uh, I had reconfigured this layout here for a inverter that I have that is a bit smaller than this. So this is a fair amount bigger, probably a good, I would say 50% bigger than that uh, NovaPal inverter that I had. But this is, you can tell it's just so much better made. So this is a very nice aluminum housing with uh, heat um, fins on here to help dissipate the, the heat. Um, now one thing is that the plus and minus on this the main connectors are on the opposite side of the inverter that I had before. So now it might not be too bad for me to have it in this orientation and my with my outlets on the top. Um, that puts them a little harder to see unless I have this down fairly low. But that could be totally doable actually. And so I think I might actually put it like this. I'm going to have to uh, reconfigure my main battery leads here and uh, cut some more appropriate cables so that those will actually reach. They're not going to be long enough for this. Uh, no big deal. I've got plenty of extra cable. And then, uh, yeah. So let me go ahead and, and set this up in this orientation and we'll mount this back on the wall. All right. Let's go ahead and put this on the wall and then I'll remove the the old cables and cut some new ones. This is one of the advantages of actually using a bus bar configuration is that I don't have to unstack all these cable connectors. I just can work on the one cable that I'm interested in. It just makes the whole thing a lot cleaner. All right, now that I got those off, I need to figure out how much cable I need to cut and crimp and heat shrink to get all the way from there to there, and then from there to there. And uh, I will say that the cables are gonna have to come out the bottom side here, not the, not the side. So, because of that, I'm wishing I had mounted this a little bit higher, but not a big deal. We can work with it. I just did a quick check on, uh, on this inverter, and it does look like a uh, 5 16 ring terminal is the right size for that. All right, got my positive and negative cables cut to length. Now let me go uh, put ring terminals on them and heat shrink, and we'll get them set up. All right, got my cables cut and terminated. You see that worked out nicely, and uh, I really like these little covers they have on the uh, main positive and negative terminals of the inverter. And uh, got these kind of curled around there, and then the negative cable curled around over to here. So made them as small as I could get them. All right, so. 
I think we're good to go there. Now I'll, all I really need to do is connect my batteries and uh, let's take a look at that. All right, just to quickly explain my setup here, I've got these two Bujar V 100 amp hour batteries uh, wired in parallel, which means that I've got this little kind of a, you call it a bus bar or cable, uh, connecting the positive leads to the positive leads and then the negative lead to the negative lead. And now I've got this connected to my system over here, or the, these are the bottom connectors to the 2000 watt Bujar V AC inverter. And I'm using a uh, two gauge cable throughout this whole thing. And this happens to be a little uh, 500 amp smart shunt from Victron. So I've got this cabled to this front uh, battery's negative terminal. And this goes to the load. Actually, this cable back here goes over here to my negative bus bar. And then I have the, uh, the, the positive lead coming off of the uh, bus bar here on the positive side. And it comes over through a little disconnect, which I can turn on but that, that'll give power to the AC inverter. And then I've got a little uh, fuse here. I think this is a 200 amp fuse. And then I've got that positively coming back around and it is connected over here to the positive side of the rear battery. So the effectively what I've got is the positive side of the rear battery and the negative side of the front battery uh, connected back to these bus bars and then up here to the, uh, to the AC inverter. So that helps make sure that I get uniform draw. Um, this is just one way that you can do this. There are other ways. Uh, I could uh, wire both batteries, both positive and negatives, back to the bus bars if I want. That's also a kind of a, a recommended way to do this. Uh, so you get uniform distribution. Uh, this is just the way that I chose to do it. So that should be fine for this particular uh, experiment. Let's uh, pull the camera back so you can see what's going on here in a little larger picture. All right, let's go ahead and do some load testing on this 2000 watt inverter. And we're going to use the app when we're doing it to kind of monitor what's going on. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the uh, disconnect so I have power. And we have power back to this. Now, the uh, power button can be set on top to on, or it can be set to off, obviously, or eco mode, All right? And we're gonna talk about that in just a second. All right, let's go ahead and launch the app. As you can see here, there's one called Solar. Interestingly enough, that's the one that we use to connect to our inverter. I've already added it to my list, so I'm gonna go ahead and press on that. And as long as there's power to the inverter, it will come up and make the Bluetooth connection. Now you can see here, it is showing me uh, that it is off. If I move the physical switch to on, actually I moved it to eco, <laughs> it'll, sh it'll reflect that in the app. And what's interesting is I can, I can turn it to the off position, the physical switch, but then I can actually press on and it'll kind of override the hardware switch with the software switch. So that's kind of cool that you can do that. You can also see I'm currently outputting no amperage. Internal device temp is 66 degrees Fahrenheit and my battery voltage is coming up at 13.4 volts. If I go into the little settings icon in the upper right hand corner, you can see I've got set points to set my over voltage and over voltage recovery, as well as over discharge and over discharge return. So those are kind of basic settings. I'm not gonna recommend that you use these particular settings. You'll probably wanna investigate that for your own particular setup. But these are the ones that I've got set up for my particular system. And I think probably more interesting for me anyway right now is the fact that on the AC voltage, if I press that, you can see I can tell it to output 120 volts or 115 volts or 110 volts. And uh, I think maybe we'll go ahead and grab the multimeter and test that. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at 120 volts. Go ahead and grab my multimeter, put it to volts AC. And as you can see, hopefully, we're getting 119.2 volts. So pretty cool that you can actually adjust that. And just to see if that actually works, let me go ahead and switch that to 110 just for kicks. And let's retest that. And we're getting 109.3. So it reached just a hair low, but I like the fact that you can specify what level you want to run this at. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back to 120 and we should be good to go. Right on the top here, I've got a couple of oil heaters plugged in and these I'm gonna be using for my load testing. So let's go ahead and fire that up. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on one of the oil heaters. And by the way, that is kicking off the fan. 
Let's go ahead and do a volume test. These fans are a little bit loud. So about 62 decibels from about one foot away. So we're pulling at 69% capacity out of that 2000, which equates to just under 1400 watts. And we're currently pulling uh, 11 and a half amps. If we go switch over and look at our Victron, which is the smart shunt I have connected here, you can see I'm actually pulling out of the batteries about 123 amps. So I gotta be careful not to exceed the 200 amp minimum or uh, continuous rated by very much on these batteries. Let's switch back over to the app and keep an eye on that. Let's take this up another 600 watts and get it right to that 2000 mark. It gets us to 1985. That was a good year. All right, so we're running at 99% capacity. All right, so now we're going to see what happens if I exceed that 2000 watts by a little bit. This does have a 4000 watt surge but it's only going to give you that for a very, very short period of time. So to do that, I'm going to turn off the 600 watt load and put a, a roughly an 880 watt load. And that'll put us over the 2000 continuous by about 280 watts. So pull off the 600 watts. That should kick us back down to about just under 14. Now I'm going to add 880 watts. And I imagine the inverter is going to alarm. as it is doing, but we're there. All right, so the inverter did cut us off after a couple seconds, so not milliseconds. I think we got two or three seconds out of that. And I shut off the input to uh, the, one of my test oil loads here, and you can see it auto-recovered. It actually jumped back in as soon as the voltage draw or the load came back down into the normal range. So this thing totally works as designed. Another thing I want to kind of point out, which is kind of cool, is this eco mode. If I switch it to eco mode, it'll pull at a particular interval uh, looking to see if there is a load. And if I click on the little settings thing down there, you can see on the bottom eco interval and eco start power. So I can tell it that as little as 30 seconds, this is the basically the interval it's going to look to see if there is a load. And if there is one, and there is one that is at least this amount of power here, this eco start power, and again, I got this set to 30 watts. So if there's at least a 30 watt load uh, connected, then it will go ahead and turn itself on. So that's kind of cool. So even though I've got it in eco right now, if I were to supply a, uh, a load here, it will start supplying that load. As you can see, it uh, came on pretty quickly. That could take up to 30 seconds, I believe, but for me, it literally took, what, two seconds. So, yeah. Yeah, this is working great. I really like this app. You can see my device temp has actually uh, increased. It was around 66, and because I just pushed this thing to its limits, we're out well over 100. And that's another thing, by the way, if we go back into settings, you can, uh, down here, you can set the fan start temperature. I've got mine set to 135. Uh, but that is actually um, kind of if the load isn't more than around 50%. So I found that about a 50% load, it doesn't really matter what that fan start temperature is set to. It's going to start the fans anyway. And uh, so if you're running a, a much lighter load where the fans normally wouldn't run, but you're doing it in a hot shed or a hot environment of some kind, and the internal temp hits that set point, it'll kick on the fans even though it's a, a smaller load. But yeah, kind of everything you basically need. I really do like the fact that I can set those set points right on the inverter and uh, kind of give me that extra layer of protection ahead of what the BMS on the batteries is, uh, is set up to do. So, good stuff. All right, so how much does this 2000 watt Bouge RV inverter cost? Well, I think the list price is currently at 369 on both BougeRV.com as well as Amazon US, but there are also a couple of discount codes that I have in the description below that can bring that price down a pretty fair amount for you if you want to go check those out. I do think the Amazon code in particular expires fairly soon. So if this is something that you're looking for right now, you might want to jump on it while those codes are still valid. I am trying to see if I can get them to extend the Amazon code, uh, but it might take a few days before I know for sure if that's going to happen or not. In any case, even with the discounts, uh, this will not be the cheapest 2000 watt AC inverter that you can buy. But you know, when you're buying something that's designed to handle high voltage and current and also provide a layer of protection for your expensive batteries, 
you know, cheapest is probably not what you should be looking for. I'm a fairly frugal guy, as my kids like to remind me on a regular basis, and obviously I never want to pay more for something than I have to, but I'm definitely willing to pay a little bit more for quality and reliability and uh, especially on a product like this AC inverter. And I do feel like that's the zone where this 2000 watt Bouge RV inverter lives. Also, if I didn't mention it previously, it does have an 18 month warranty instead of the much more typical one year warranty that you'll find on most of its direct competitors. One more thing I did wanna briefly mention is that I initially thought that the fan noise on this unit was a bit louder than my other inverters. And I was gonna list that as an observation in you know, the negative column, but I did some investigating and it, as it turns out, 60 to 62 dB is pretty much par for the course on just about any two or 3000 watt inverter under heavy load. And I discovered that I actually got virtually the same dB readings from both my other 12 volt 2000 watt inverters and my 3000 watt 24 volt inverter under similar loads. So I think it'd be unfair to list that as a negative since this is pretty typical for this product class. All right, so to wrap up, I'd say that if you're in the market currently for a well-built 12 volt 2000 watt inverter, whether it be for your RV or camper or maybe a small solar system, I'm very confident in recommending this particular model and I think it deserves a spot on your short list. And again, I did put links in the video description below if you wanna go pick one up or maybe you just wanna go gather some additional information. Hey, if you did find any of this information helpful at all, I'd really appreciate it if you could uh, be willing to click that like button for me. It really does help others find the channel, which might, you know, in the, in the long run, help me justify to my wife all the hours I spend tinkering with all this fun stuff instead of getting out and seeing cool places with her. Probably not, but you know, hey, a guy can dream, right? Anyway, I sincerely appreciate you spending a little of your time with me today, and uh, I do hope you'll join me for the next one. Until then, go out and go see some cool places with your significant other, and uh, don't forget to have fun out there.